Okay, well, a very warm welcome. I'm honestly delighted to see, see you here this morning. Um, it's, there's, there's no substitute, I think, for meeting people face to face. We are recording um, the conference, so all the information of the speakers will be available online for our members afterwards. Um, but in terms of the opportunity to see you, to shake hands and to, to find out your stories, I really appreciate you coming along, particularly yourselves as speakers and researchers. I hope it's a really good conference. Um, the sun's shining, we've got a nice breakout area, so everything looks good. Okay, um, our first session this morning is done by Dr. Joanna Moss and Dr. Kirsten, uh, what's your surname, Kirsten? <laughs> Just Kirsten to me, so. <laughs> okay, I have got a few notes uh, just to introduce both of you. So Joanna completed a PhD at the University of Birmingham in 2005. Uh, she then worked as a research fellow um, at the Institute of Psychology and Psychiatry and Neuroscience, and then at the Cereba Center for Neurodevelopment Disorders at the University of Birmingham. Her research is focused on the understanding and the prevalence and profile of socio-cognitive mechanisms underpinning the development of autism-related characteristics in individuals with genetic syndromes. That hardly <laughs> springs up. There. I'm glad I said that. Okay. Um, and supporting Joanna will be Kirsten. Kirsten's married to Jonathan. They have three daughters, two of whom are affected by Fragile X. And Kirsten joined the society in 2008 and is particularly interested in how Fragile X affects girls and female issues. She also co-authored an article for a leading academic journal on Frontiers entitled Fragile X, a Premutation Associated Conditions. Kirsten is also the chair of the Fragile X Society, and I've got to say, Kirsten does a fabulous job as chair, puts a huge amount of energy and time in keeping the society going. Brilliant, thank you. So, over to you both. Um, I've been asked to make sure you speak into the microphone for the benefit of those people who'll be watching online late, later. Thank you. Thank you, Pete, very much for that introduction. It's lovely to be here today. Um, just to add on to that, if any of you need a hearing loop, there is a hearing loop facility, so please talk to the tech guys at the back. And if my voice starts fading off, just tell me to speak louder, because I can project and I can speak loudly. I just need to remember to speak slowly and clearly. This picture here was taken in Rotterdam in 2019 at the European Fragile X Network Conference. We were walking down the street for our evening meal when our colleague from Denmark spotted the PMC sign and shouted, that's us, we're PMC, pre-mutation carriers. So we took a picture of 13 women from across Europe, all who live with the Fragile X pre-mutation. Whilst this picture is just of women, I should clarify that both men and women are carriers. The pre-mutation is common with around one in 200 women and one in 400 men having the, free, the Fragile X premutation. Also in Rotterdam that week in 2019 was the fourth international conference on the FMR1 premutation. FMR1 is the gene which leads to Fragile X syndrome. FMR1 stands for Fragile X Messenger Ribonucleoprotein 1. The FMR1 gene is responsible for producing a protein called FMRP, which is necessary for normal brain development and function. Everyone has this gene. One section of the FMR1 gene contains a particular DNA segment known as a CGG trinucleotide repeat. This segment of three DNA building blocks, or nucleotides, is repeated multiple times within the gene. In most people, the number of CGG repeats ranges from fewer than 10 to about 40. Those of us, however, with the premutation have more than the normal, sorry, have more than the normal number of CGG repeats, but less than the number of repeats which leads to Fragile X syndrome. So you'll see on the chart ahead of you, the general population having less, 
the premutation carriers there in the middle, which is us, having 55 to 200 repeats, and then Fragile X syndrome being diagnosed after 200 repeats of CGG. Now, Pete kindly referred to our article, which I co-authored with two other colleagues, and I'd like to tell you about that. As part of the European Fragile X Network Conference in Rotterdam, we had a session on new terminology for premutation carriers. The background is that when Fragile X syndrome was discovered over 30 years ago, the focus was very much more on those with the condition. And it is only in recent years that carrier issues have been highlighted. Fragile X Premutation Associated Conditions was a peer-reviewed paper which drew together the concerns from premutation carriers across 16 countries. The paper was published in Frontiers in May 2020 as part of the special edition for the International FMR1 Conference. You can access the full text online and there is also a piece on our website about this article. I will now read part of the introductory paragraph. The European Fragile X Network proposes that Fragile X Premutation Associated Conditions be adopted as a universal term covering any condition linked to the Fragile X Premutation. To date, there has not been an umbrella term assigned to issues associated with the FMR1 Premutation. An overarching term covering all Fragile X Premutation conditions will help doctors in determining how the premutation might be affecting their patient and encourage researchers to explore the interrelationships of the various conditions affecting premutation carriers. Further, there are ongoing discoveries about physical and psychological issues faced by premutation carriers, and a new term helps encompass all of these burgeoning developments. Since publication, FaxPack has been cited in numerous articles and it is now being used widely as an umbrella term for all conditions which could affect the FMR1 premutation carrier. One of those conditions is FAXTAS, or Fragile X Associated Tremor Ataxia Syndrome. Recent estimates are that 30 to 40 percent of male premutation carriers will exhibit some features of FAXTAS, and 8 to 16 percent of female premutation carriers may develop symptoms too. This is a late onset condition, and the risk of developing FAXTAS increases with age. So symptoms include intention tremor or shaking during a purposeful movement, ataxia, balance and coordination difficulties, numbness in the extremities, otherwise known as neuropathy, cognitive symptoms, including anxiety and memory loss. There are specialist ataxia clinics around the UK, and the society has a specialist advisor who works in this area. Our family and support advisors can give you further information, so please do speak to them if you have any concerns. Another condition is faxpoi. Women who are premutation carriers of Fragile X may experience faxpoi. The condition can present with milder symptoms, such as irregular menstrual cycles, or there could be more severe presentations, such as early menopause. Faxpoi is different from the menopause because women can still get pregnant. This is because the periods may be irregular, but they may not have stopped. It is believed that around 20% of female premutation carriers develop symptoms of faxpoi. Again, if you have any concerns, please do speak to your GP. You can be referred for specialist fertility treatment or gynecological treatment. And please do also speak to our family support workers for further advice on this. There we go. Research has also shown that people who are premutation carriers experience some mental and physical health symptoms at higher rates than the general population, which are not encompassed by FAXTAS or FAXPOI. Though research is ongoing, the following symptoms have been found to occur in higher rates in people with the Fragile X premutation. Anxiety, low mood and depression, elevated traits related to autism, such as differences in the processing of social information and the use of social language. Physical health symptoms, such as chronic fatigue, chronic pain, fibromyalgia, autoimmune disorders, sleep problems, have also been identified at higher rates in people with the Fragile X premutation. A paper in 2020 suggested there also might be heart problems, such as hypertension, linked to being a premutation carrier. One of, 
one or more neuropsychiatric conditions are said to affect approximately half of premutation carriers. Anxiety and depression are the most common issues seen. The researchers have argued that physical problems, such as chronic pain and autoimmune difficulties, can heighten the neuropsychiatric issues. What is also unknown is whether there might be other causes unrelated to being a premutation carrier, which lead to anxiety and depression. Further research is ongoing on differentiating what is actually caused by the fMR1 premutation and what might just be prevalent due to external factors, such as carrying responsibilities. Please note that Fragile X associated neuropsychiatric disorders is a term used by some researchers, but the preferred term, as endorsed by the European Fragile X Network, is indeed Fragile X associated neuropsychiatric conditions, or FACS Inc. Now, we are part of Fragile X International connected with a community of FMR1 carriers across 17 country organizations who are all working together to raise awareness around carrier issues. And do check out fraxi.org for further information. Oops, sorry, this is a little bit more sensitive than I realized. That's fraxi.org. So it is clear that we were only beginning to understand the wider significance of being a fragile X premutation carrier and further research is needed to understand all of the pos possible consequences. This is necessary to ensure that there is effective recognition, understanding, and support for all people with the Fragile X premutation. The Fragile X Society is keen to support research on carrier issues and to develop a hub network across the UK to support not only those with Fragile X syndrome, but also those who are carriers. Please do speak to our family and professional advisors if you have any concerns. They're both here today and we can introduce you to them if that would be helpful. <coughs> I'd like to hand over to Dr. Jo Moss, who will now tell us of her research into one particular aspect of premutation, and that is how autism is more prevalent amongst female premutation carriers. So thank you very much. Thanks very much um, for having me here today, and I'm really pleased to be talking to you this morning um, about some of the issues that, that Kirsten's already mentioned, um, in particular about social and emotional well-being uh, in, in females with the uh, premutation. So um, I'm very aware that some of the contents of this talk is going to potentially be challenging for some individuals, um, and, and uh, just again highlighting that is it Jane and Caroline who are here today? So if there are any things that you find difficult and that you want to talk about, please do go and, and seek them out. Um, so, sorry, it's a bit tricky because I can't see what's exactly on there. Um, so the reason why we've been focusing on females uh, with the premutation is really in response to emergent literature, which is showing um, that um, in addition to some of those physical health issues that we, we know are common and prevalent in this population, that there are other factors related to social and emotional well-being um, that we think might be uh, relevant to, to uh, females with the premutation. Um, there is some research in this area, but a lot of it has tended to focus on males with the premutation. And so females with the premutation are very much underrepresented within this evidence base. Um, and so really we wanted to try and address that, ba that balance um, and start to, to focus on, on females with the premutation um, and on these very important issues. Um, and I think one of the things that I always kind of think about when I think about this, this population and this group of people is that there, are, there is such a unique um, presentation of challenges for women with the premutation, uh, many of whom are caring for children with severe uh, disability, um, who may also have a parent or a grandparent who may be experiencing symptoms of uh, fax tests. And there are just so many different factors that kind of complicate that picture. And I think it's just really important to raise awareness that um, you know, this is a really challenging picture and, and I think a really unique set of challenges that really needs to be, um, we need to spend more time, we need to focus on those individuals and provide better support where we can. Um, 
So I'm going to talk um, about uh, some of the research that we've been doing in this area. Um, we um, carried out an online survey, so this is a questionnaire study, um, and we addressed, uh, we, we, we asked questions of two different groups of individuals. So in the first study, we were focusing on mothers of children with fragile X syndrome, so the, um, uh, the acronym that I've used here is uh, CMFXP to, to refer to those individuals, so carrier mothers. Um, and then in the second study, we were looking at both mothers and non-mothers with the premutation. So trying to kind of get to the bottom of some of those um, factors around caring responsibilities that might interact with um, some of the, the, the social and emotional well-being factors. Um, and so we asked lots of different questions. Um, we asked questions about stress and adjustment and caring responsibilities. We asked questions about anxiety and depression and other factors related to mental health. And we asked questions about autistic traits. Um, so these are sort of personality traits around social preferences and sensory um, preferences. Um, and in the first study, um, these were our participants. So we have 51 mothers of children with fragile X syndrome. And uh, we also recruited mothers of autistic children, uh, mothers of children with smith mcgenna syndrome, which is another uh, genetic syndrome associated with inter intellectual disability, and mothers of neurotypical children. And so we're looking at how people's responses um, compare across those different groups. And what we found was, rather unsurprisingly, that levels of stress are very high across um, all groups of mothers who are caring for a child with a neurodevelopmental condition. Um, and that anxiety is relatively high, too. So, so unsurprisingly, those things were cropping up in, in, in mothers of children with fragile X syndrome, but also mothers of children with smith mcgenna syndrome and mothers of autistic children. Um, Interestingly, levels of depression were not quite so significantly high in, in the mothers um, of children with fragile X syndrome relative to some of the other groups. So um, although we saw high levels of anxiety, um, the, the levels of depression were not as high as, as what we had seen in other groups. Um, and in relation to autistic traits, what we identified um, was that there, um, mothers of children with fragile X syndrome and mothers of autistic children tended to score quite highly on autistic traits. Um, and um, we also, when you look at um, a cutoff score, which is, it, which is suggestive, suggestive of high, a high proportion of traits, um, again, we found um, that around 40% of uh, mothers of, of children with fragile X syndrome um, scored above this cutoff, suggesting that there were sort of fairly high levels of autistic traits. Now, I want to be very clear that we're not talking about autism here. We're talking about traits and personality characteristics um, that are uh, that we're more likely to see um, in autism populations. So this isn't about diagnosis of autism. These are just traits that kind of vary generally across the population. But they do seem to be reported more highly in uh, mothers of, of children with fragile X syndrome. So just to come back to this point around autistic traits. So these traits are very common in the general population. Um, and um, they might be um, things like sensory sensitivities, um, difficulties in social situations, social preferences. Um, and again, that we all experience at various points in, in our lifetime. Um, and what we can see here in the graph um, are in the red line, these are neurotypical individuals, so men and women um, without autism. And you can see that whilst many score quite low um, on, on, uh, on measures of autistic traits, um, there are a, a number of people who, uh, who score quite highly. So if we look over here, um, these are uh, neurotypical individuals, males and females many scoring in this sort of lower level in terms of autistic traits, but actually many also scoring quite highly in terms of autistic traits. So they do kind of vary across the population. Um, in people with a diagnosis of autism, in the blue lines, males and females, um, we see more, we see a shift over here, so more people showing higher levels of these, these traits, um, but also individuals scoring very low in terms of traits as well. So it kind of varies across the, across the, the different populations. And what we think in the fragile X premutation population is that perhaps they sit, this curve sits somewhere, somewhere in the middle. So it's shifted slightly 
um, uh, but not as, not as high as we might expect to see in people with a diagnosis of autism, um, but sits more centrally here with sort of more individuals scoring more highly on those autistic traits. And this seems to be reflected in people's experiences. So we, we spent some time talking to um, mothers and non-mothers um, with the premutation. Um, and actually, this was um, part of an article that we put together for the Fragile X Society a few years ago. I couldn't find, it was on the website, I couldn't find it this morning. It may well be there somewhere in the kind of depth of, uh, of, the, of the newsreels. But um, this was an article that we put together and we talked to, to a range of different people about their experiences and how they kind of identified with some of these issues. And you can see that for some people, there is a mention, um, you know, that, that some of these things might be challenging. So um, over here, some, uh, there's an inability to spend time with, with people without some kind of downtime. So that sense of feeling overwhelmed by social interactions and big social situations um, and the, the need to sort of take time out from those situations. Um, also, people talking about difficulties in terms of maintaining friendships is something that might have been um, apparent for them um, as they were growing up and, and, and currently. Um, and, um, but, but this isn't always the case, and there are certainly some people who don't identify with these, the, these challenges. Um, actually, this, for this individual, socialising and being sociable and being able to develop and maintain friendships was a, really strength, was a real strength for that particular individual. So these are certainly not things that everybody experiences and that everybody identifies with. Um, and then here, again, sort of thinking about the anxiety and mental health issues. So anxiety has always been a part of their life. Their son uh, and daughter who are carriers also struggle with anxiety. And so, again, identifying with some of those mental health challenges that, that seem to be evident within this population. But as Kirsten says, one of the things that's quite challenging here is that obviously mothers who are, who are caring for a child with a severe disability, um, it, you know, it, those factors impact potentially on some of these, um, these issues around particularly anxiety and depression, um, but also, you know, the ability to, to socialise, the ability to go out and, 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 and engage in, in social activities. Um, and so we wanted to try and disentangle that a little bit. It's a quite, which is quite challenging to do, um, but I think we made a, a small start in, in being able to do that. So in this study, in the second part of the study, um, we asked very similar questions um, around social preferences, around anxiety and depression um, of mothers of children with fragile X syndrome who had the premutation and non-mothers who had the premutation. So trying to sort of tease out that, uh, those caring responsibilities there. Um, and what we found was that in terms of autistic traits, actually both groups, mothers and non-mothers with the premutation, score significantly higher than those who don't have the premutation um, in terms of autistic traits. Um, and that suggests to us that there may be factors related to the premutation that may increase the possibility of these, the, pre the presence of these traits occurring. Now, this is a survey study, so it's quite difficult to make really clear inferences about that. But certainly these findings seem to suggest that the premutation um, does influence some of those social well-being factors. And similarly, we found uh, in relation to anxiety, um, that those women with the premutation, regardless of whether they were mothers uh, and care, had caring responsibilities, were showing those high levels of um, anxiety and mental health challenges. So again, it's a survey study, we have to be very cautious, but there is some indication that those with the premutation might be more likely to show some of these challenges. And that may not necessarily always be related to those caring responsibilities, but we, we need to look more into that. Um, so, um, that is what we are doing now. Um, we have funding from the Academy of Medical Sciences to um, uh, develop and work on a project whereby we can really focus on some of these issues, direct assessments um, uh, 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 rather than surveys, really talk to people and get some insight into your experiences, um, strengths, differences, and, 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 um, and get a better understanding of this sort of unique set of challenges. Um, so that study is running at the moment. Um, we are recruiting 
participants for this study at the moment. Um, Natalie, who you will hear from later, was leading this study up until very recently, and then she was offered her sort of dream job at King's College, and she abandoned us and left us. So, um, so we are in the process of appointing uh, a new researcher who will lead this, but we are looking for people who would be interested in taking part in this study. Um, we really want to hear about people's experiences in interviews, in questionnaires, but also in, in terms of kind of direct interactions and assessments as well. And the thing that I wanted to say here, which is really important, is that we do recognise that some of these challenges people, many people don't necessarily identify with. But actually, we really want to hear from you, even if you don't feel that those issues are, 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 are relevant to you. And actually, it's important that we hear from you if you don't feel that these issues are relevant to you. Otherwise, what happens is the research then is biased towards those who are experiencing some of those challenges. And we want to get a real representation of the population. So please do come and talk to us today if you're interested in finding out more about this project. Um, and thank you, these are just funders and, and collaborators, and I'll leave it there.